They all come to war blog. So they were looking at this innate assault in Niger. It's not a big one. Um, and it's another one of those sort of very simple games. It's more of a valley along the way, but you know, don't get that with the style of map. I'm thinking about doing some elevations, subtle simplified form of elevations, but something else. I put two, two, three instead of one, one, three, as I'm sort of normally doing these situations. But the thing is, it's obviously news, um, sort of yesterday, day before, something like that. Um, these militants, no one knows who they are. Exactly, the BBC says it's ISIS, but I don't know. Um, even probably more like well, Boko Haram, but because um, ISIS are sort of quite a um, minority militant force in that area, but, but there are other ones, I guess. Um, but the thing that gets me about this, and one of the reasons I sort of jumped at it, is that some 71 people died. And these aren't sort of 71, you know, fishermen. These are 71 heavily armed soldiers who were probably really keyed up on the prospect of being surprised and attacked by militants. And for 71 people to die, and they said there were hundreds of them attacking. So they were in three units. So I can't really say there'd be more than 600. Tensibly speaking, one of these companies is 200, but because they're militant, because they're irregulars, they generally lower the numbers down, and generally I lower the numbers down anyway, it's all relative. Um, but even so, I think three is pretty generous. Um, but even so, the point is, to kill 71 people, you need a lot of people in the first place to attack a defensive position. And so presumably there was up to 200 people in here, and then maybe 150. Um, so, you know, although it's just a little map, it must have been a hell of a fight. You know, I mean, it's not as though they only fired 71 bullets and every one of them hit. Uh, the fighting must have gone on for hours, and it must have been you know, people fighting for their lives. Um, they said that 15 militants died, so these people are prepared to die as well. And um, you know, when you look at it on a hex and grid format, it's always fairly sort of um, what's the word? You, you, you know, abstract. You know, it's hard to sort of look at the reality of the situation, but um, it just you know, I just kept thinking, wow, that's a lot of people, and, you know, I, mean, I wouldn't say it's not in the headlines, but, you know, it's not regularly in the headlines. Um, you know, I guess it's happening in another country, so it's not as important. So I'm not trying to say it should be, but it just sort of struck me as being, you know, pretty significant. I mean, you know, it's not unusual. Other places, have, more people have died. Um, but anyway, so we're just going to have a look at that. Um, so this is the border near Mali in Niger. Um, the one of the articles, either Al Jazeera, I think it's Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera sort of mistakenly referred to them as Nigeria, Nigerian troops or something. I'm pretty sure they're making a mistake and they're referring to Niger troops, um, but. Maybe they're right, maybe they were Nigerian troops, part of the G54. So anyway, I was going to put some insurgents in there, so like, you know, to drive a car bomb in there to start off with. Um, but it doesn't say they did, so I haven't included them, but that might take the edge off of this. Now all this is, is going to be... An attack. I have no idea what's going to come up like. Well, it should be 15, 16, 16, it should be about 18 to 6, it should be 3 or 4 to 1. I'm just thinking just completely on the fly. Yeah, so 3 to 1.
Oh, got a tiny fraction bit of movement left, so we can attack. <laughs> they held their ground that time. So that was 15 militants dying there. They're going to run away. So 71 Niger troops just died. We did a little extra skirmish with 15 militants died. They're now running away. That's been destroyed. And they're now heading back to where they came from. There you go. And what we have is modern war. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. It sort of intrigues me, really. Um, a lot of people they talk about modern war, and <coughs> it's all about tanks and hellfire missiles and laser-guided bombs and armor, you know, the armor capacity and reactive armor of armoured fighting vehicles and integrated military operations with psyops and battle space management programming you know but <clears throat> there isn't really much of that going on what's happening is these militants are driving around in Toyota trucks attacking government forces here and there um, obviously this is not the end of the world and this has been going on for years but it just you know, I just always a little taken back. I've got a picture on my wall actually uh, called The World at War. And it came from the magazine series I got the set on eBay called um, War in Peace. And it's got pictures of Harrier jump jets because it's quite old and there's Israeli APC and there's some US troops in Vietnam behind a wall. Um, and you know the, the concept and the impression and image of modern war has really not changed a lot since that poster was made when you know conventional forces were more likely to fight conventional forces and um, you know I don't want to start preaching on that and all of that but you know, it does strike me that you know it has changed quite a lot um, and obviously there'll be big engagements and always will be, uh, especially with the US acting quickly here and there and maybe other major government forces acting, you know, um, proactively in one form or another. Just looking at the news, Hafta has declared a final push on Tripoli. Um, whether anything will happen with that, I don't know. But, you know, I don't think that they're going to be trolling out sort of, you know, 400 battle tanks for that. It just seems to be, you know, they've got a new fleet of cars from Avis and they've put machine guns on the back of them or something and they're just going to ram at these sort of impregnable defences that the, um, the GNA have set up. Um, but be interesting, you know, because they would have thought that they can't, they're, they're, their defences can't be that great. I mean, you know, I can't imagine that that anyone could withstand you know, an intense artillery barrage. I mean, I think the Russian sort of doctrine on these sorts of things was 17 to 1 odds in, in sort of one particular space, mainly derived primarily through massive saturation of artillery, including these rocket things that they have, ones that grad rockets that just destroy entire parcels of land. Um, sucking up all the oxygen so that no one can breathe even. Um, you know, you would have thought that it would be that difficult to actually advance in that sort of area, but the nature of war is not quite, you know, as it is in sort of the, the, the war brochures. Um, you know, they're not, they don't have that much equipment. And, um, but this is a, a good example, I think, of you know what's actually happening on a day in day out basis on the war front, so to speak, where there is conflict. Um, and you know, 71 people is not a lot. I mean, 71 people is, is quite a lot. You know, souls to just suddenly vanish 
in, in sort of, you know, hell's fire, so to speak. So anyway, I thought I'd cover that. Um, obviously, there's not much more to say. I could talk forever, really, but I'm going to leave it at that. Um, so, there you go. Bloody conflict in Africa, business as usual. Um, speak to you later. Cheerio.